Welcome into Lemons to Lemonade. My name is Kara and we're a furniture flipping family located deep in the heart of Texas. Today we are tackling a mid-century modern dresser makeover. This dresser got a lot of attention over on our Instagram feed and had over 1,000 views on our Facebook Marketplace feed when we listed it for sale. So come along with us to the garage as we show you what we did to restore this MCM 1950s beauty. I'll see you out there. So here's our starting point. This is called a Hollywood dresser by Starline Furniture. It was produced in the 1950s. This one had really great bones on it, really structurally. There was nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Original pulls, drawers are beautiful inside as you can see. So everything was really, really good on this. It had a little bit of veneer damage on the top, which you'll see in a little bit. But all in all, everything was really intact. There's a stamp from the company that tells what it is. So that's always exciting when you find one of those. Just a beautiful, beautiful piece. And of course, it came with the matching original nightstands to the item as well. I mean, you just never find stuff like this. It's quite a rarity. So when I saw it on Facebook Marketplace, we definitely snapped this one up. Here's some of the veneer damage I was talking about. We're gonna run into some issues with this a little bit later in the project, so I won't spoil anything for you, but just stay tuned. First things first, I always need to give all my projects a good scrub down. I like to use crud cutter, mix it up to the package directions and put it in some warm water. So that's what I go over all my pieces with. It helps to get out any grease, grime, dirt, or fingerprints left behind. I'm keeping the hardware because they are awesome and original to the piece. So everything got a good scrub, including the hardware. And now we're gonna take the hardware off. I always make sure I clean the insides of my pieces. This one came from a very lovely clean house, but you're about to see why it's oh so important to always clean the insides of your dressers if you're gonna resell them. Um, they're just old sometimes and they sit around and they get that inside of them. Yes, they do. So you need to clean your pieces really well. I've got a little bit of veneer damage on one side. I'm going to use a craft syringe and some Gorilla Glue for furniture or for wood and put it into these little cracks and crannies with the syringe and make sure I've got plenty in there before we clamp this shut. Now that my wood glue is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and fix the veneer on the edges that's missing and mix up some wood fill Bondo. You use a little bit of the brown putty, put a stripe of the red putty on top, mix it until it forms a pinkish color and start working right away. This is a great way to help fill missing veneer spots. I really love using Bondo for that versus just regular wood fill. Thank you. 
My original design idea on this is to leave some of it natural wood and paint some of the other parts. So I'm going to start sanding what I think I wanna leave as natural wood to start with, and that includes this base. Some of the drawers are going to be left in this beautiful natural wood tone as well. So I grabbed my Surf Prep Sander 3x4 ray with the squishy pad attachment and it just goes into all these corners and curves really beautifully to get the project down to bare wood. So the top had this really, really paper thin veneer, thinner than my fingernail on the top of it, which was made of birch veneer. Um, I had never seen veneer this thin, so we are going to just smooth it out and paint over the top. There's no way we're going to be able to sand this top. It already has too much damage. Sand it down to the bare wood at least, and then the veneer itself is just too thin. I mean, you would blast right through it, but we've got to get it smooth enough to have a nice smooth paint job on the top. It's almost time to paint, so we used our three inch painter's tape to cover the areas that are gonna be left as raw wood. And this will just make sure that we don't get any of our paint on it. Now it's time to tape up the drawers. Taping up the drawers like this just helps ensure that none of your paint gets into your drawers so you're not left with extra sanding work and looks really professional at the end. We've chosen the color Clary Sage by Sherwin-Williams for this piece. It's just a beautiful soft muted green. We're gonna load it into our Gravity Fed HVLP sprayer, put a little bit of water on the top to help it go through the gun a little easier, and then we're ready to paint. Am I allowed to have an I told you so moment? Okay, so my husband's sitting right next to me as I do my voiceovers. And as soon as he put this on, I could see right away that it was going to bleed through. I wasn't out there taping, I just have to say. But um, this is an easy fix. You're gonna see the bleed through come through in just a second here. And by the time this had dried, we had seen that this was gonna be an issue and we took a shellac based primer over the top of it um, it really just was on the top. Like, again, I'm going to show you a picture of what this top was made out of, but it was just this paper thin veneer with plywood underneath. And the rest of it wasn't made like this. They made the sides and the drawers, everything else was different, but the top, they did this weird pattern on and, um, they made it out of a different type of wood. So we had some issues with it, but nothing that a real quick primer wouldn't fix. So we did end up going back over this with that. And I didn't tape that.
While the green paint dries, it's time to work on the parts that are gonna be left as the raw wood. First thing I'm gonna do is take a tack cloth over the drawers and get off any extra sanding dust that might be on there. Next, I'm gonna use this Minwax Finishing Paste wax on my wax brush, get quite a bit on my brush, and then start working it into the grain of these drawers. After I've applied the wax, I'll use a clean lint-free cloth and go back and wipe off any extra and be left with just some beautiful wood grain on the fronts of these drawers. We are going to leave this drawer space and the bottom also as the raw wood. So same things here. I'm just going over it with a tack cloth. Then I will apply the wax and then wipe back any extra with a lint-free dust-free cloth. You're going to see on the inside that I touch the little green part with the furniture wax. That's actually fine. This is furniture wax, so all I'm going to have to do is take that lint-free cloth and just kind of buff that in and it'll go away. It won't stay there like a line. This Rust-Oleum Metallic Flat Gold has been my go-to for my MCM pieces lately. So now that my hardware is all nice and clean and dry, I'm going to go over it with my flat gold spray paint. My first coat, you don't want to get this too heavy. The first coat you want to just get something that's going to stick and then make it perfect on your second and third coats. Okay, so before the big reveal, let's talk numbers. I purchased this furniture set for $50. We spent $22 on the paint, so that gives me an all-in price of $72. Bucks. We sold the set in about a day's time for the full listing price of $770. That gives us a take-home profit at the end of the day of $698. Bucks. 
This one had a lot of love poured into it, so I was really happy with the price we ended up selling it for. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and leave me a comment and let me know you're here and where you're joining us from. We are a YouTube channel that brings you unique furniture flips every Friday afternoon, so please hit subscribe and hit that notification bell. We'd love for you to not miss a beat on our exciting furniture flips. At the end of this video, we'll show you what we've been working on next week, so be sure to stick around for that. And finally, what you've been waiting for, the big reveal. We hope you enjoy, and we will see you next week on Lemons to Lemonade.